You're watching ABC 7 News at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. Our top story tonight, Florida Governor Rick Scott was in Sarasota today paying a visit to a local business and taking the time to talk about jobs. ABC 7's Rick Adams gives us a look at the governor's visit. Well, there is certainly a lot of excitement in the air here at Rapid Composites. The governor was treated to some amazing technology, including this drone. It's not every day the governor pays a visit to your business. On Wednesday, Governor Rick Scott met with employees at Rapid Composites, a Sarasota-based company that has been on the cutting edge of technology for years now. The governor says he's proud of the fact that Florida businesses have created around one and a half million jobs since December of 2010. I like working with people that care about jobs. The, we just announced $35 million state investment in nine communities in our Florida Job uh, Growth Grant Fund. That's going to create more jobs in our state. Uh, my goal is month in and month out. Uh, add jobs. Rapid Composites is a small business that designs, engineers, and manufactures a variety of hardware, including advanced drone technology for law enforcement and the military. They are actively hiring and have just recently teamed up with Wilcox Industries, where they are focused on a new line of light tactical drone products. This is a big day for all those who work hard on these specialized products. We're very excited. It's, it's, uh, it's not uh, every day that we have somebody like that come down and and give us the opportunity to, uh, to, to show our respect for what he's been doing, but also what we're uh, able to produce and, and help out. The governor had high praise for the unique work being done right in Sarasota, especially with this business. The company's president, Alan Taylor, tells us he was excited to be able to have the governor's eyes and ears. Really enjoyed getting an opportunity to showcase our business here in Florida. So we're a, we're a small, up-and-coming, um, advanced composites manufacturer and um, we uh, we started with one computer and, and worked our way up. Well, things have really quieted down here at Rapid Composites. It's a company that's now on everybody's radar, including the governor. Reporting from Sarasota, I'm Rick Adams, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Okay, thank you so much, Rick. With Scott's announcement today on Florida jobs, he also announced a new pl a job placement partnership to help displaced Puerto Rican families find jobs here in the state after Hurricane Maria. The partnership will be between education, business, and workforce development organizations. The announcement comes on the heels of a $1 million investment into Florida's workforce to help those displaced families. Eight species have been added to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's guidelines. Those species guidelines are designed to be a tool for landowners and provide species specific information on key issues that are relevant to conservation. 57 species are currently in the agency's imperiled species management plan. For a look at those guidelines, you can head over to our website at mysuncoast.com. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan for a look at our first alert forecast. Bob? Thanks, Jack. And pretty warm tonight. Right now at this hour, it's 66 degrees. That is warm for this time of year. The dew point, pretty close to it. And we've been telling you this under clear skies and these two numbers getting close to one another. That always is the possibility, at least, of some fog. And we have light winds now east to southeast at 3 miles an hour. The pressure still very high, 30-23. And it looks as though we will see that uh, sea fog uh, rather uh, rather light to, to the south of us, but a little bit heavier to the north of us right now. We'll be in between, so a pretty good chance we'll get some sea fog here. Uh, the frontal boundary itself is really losing a lot of its steam as it heads to the southeast now. It's not much left to it. A few showers over North Florida. This is the uh, current fog conditions. Although visibilities are still at 10 miles, uh, there's some low clouds already starting to develop and work their way on shore. That's going to be about the only downside to our weather tomorrow is the fact that we may see uh, some of this fog limiting visibilities for uh, drop off for school as well as uh, the drive to work. Uh, looks like it could be rather tough going in places along the Sun Coast. Not everyone, but I still think it'll be a problem uh, to start things off tomorrow. But then it should burn off by, say, 9, 10 o'clock, and we'll look at uh, partly cloudy skies to mostly cloudy conditions as a result of that front nearby. Well, more on our forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Bob. While Florida Governor Rick Scott was in Sarasota talking jobs today, Attorney General Jeff Sessions was in Tampa talking about the nation's opioid epidemic. Sessions saying federal investigators continue to crack down on dark net marketplaces. That's a computer network used primarily for illegal file sharing where people sometimes buy illegal drugs. The Drug Enforcement Agency is now asking medical practitioners whether they have received continuing med medical education on prescription 
prescribing or dispensing opioids when they apply for a license or renew. Sessions also highlighting several overdose cases in Central Florida. Few families in this country are untouched by this disaster. Who could forget the tragic story of Katie Golden, a 17-year-old from South Tampa? She died last year after accidentally overdosing on heroin. Session says too many opioids are prescribed across the United States. A long-term investigation into the sale, of illegal the sale of illegal narcotics in the city of Bradenton has led to the arrest of eight people. Multiple search warrants today led to those arrests. Items seized included over nine pounds of synthetic marijuana, five grams of marijuana, and over 67 grams of cocaine. And the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help identifying this person who broke into a Sarasota gas station last month. Take a good look at that photo. Detectives say this person broke into the BP gas station on South Tamiami Trail in Sarasota on January 17th around 2.30 in the morning. They then removed the cash register and ATM. Anyone with information is asked to contact Sarasota County Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen. That's 366-TIPS. Anna Maria Island residents are fighting to get two former Public Works employees their jobs back after the men were fired for tanking planks from the city pier. After Hurricane Irma destroyed the pier, Jeanette Langer was worried the city would throw out the plank she sponsored in memory of her grandson. She reached out to the mayor, and when she didn't hear back, she reached out to her family friend and City of Anna Maria Public Works employee Peter Pier about her concerns. He then went to the pier with his co-worker, Taylor Manhart, right. while they were working and took two planks for their loved ones, replacing them with other boards. Two days later, they were both fired. I never even thought second because I, I figured it was no big deal. I mean, because they were going to tear the dock down. And that was the last couple of days before the last of anybody could request a plank. So, you know, she was scared and I was, uh, you know, it's a good friend. I've known her for a long time. The city came and took the Langer family's plank back. At Thursday's city commission meeting, the community is presenting the mayor with a petition asking for a lesser punishment for the two men. A new study suggests the Jacaranda Roundabout in Venice may be reaching its maximum of daily drivers. The two-lane roundabout was built in 2011, but since then, the amount of drivers using it has skyrocketed. The Florida Department of Transportation says the max amount of daily drivers should be around 45,000, but that roundabout is currently at 41,000. That's all according to a study paid for by Venice Regional Hospital. Some warn that study depends on many factors, including what day of the week it was conducted. So much depends on when you take the data, both time of year and time of day and weather. I mean, you think about it, there are all sorts of problems. Sarasota County says they are reviewing that study. The push for more affordable housing in Florida heating up at the state capitol today. That's where lawmakers were joined by city and county officials asking the state legislature to dedicate more funding for affordable housing, calling the current housing situation in the state a crisis. The group is also asking leaders not to divert money from the housing trust fund to balance the state budget, which has been done in previous years. So far, the Florida Senate has agreed to spend all of the affordable housing trust fund money as intended. However, the state house plans to use more than half of it on other areas of the budget. In a proposal that would create voucher-like scholarships for students who have been bullied in public schools continue to move forward in the Florida House. The House Education Committee approving a bill today that would create the HOPE Scholarship Program. It would be funded through drivers making contributions when they buy cars. In exchange for the voluntary contributions, the motorists would receive credits on their taxes that would otherwise pay on the purchases. Supporters of the bill say the legislation could help close to 6,000 students have a chance for a better education, while opposition to the measure say it is just another attempt to expand the use of taxpayer dollars by private schools. We don't need to send more public dollars into private school pockets than we already are. We need them in public schools to continue the mission that public schools is set out to do. I was a victim of bullying and switching from out of the public school system has changed my life for the better. I am in support of the HOPE Scholarship because I want a student to have the same option to not feel alone and isolated from the rest of his peers. 
The legislation is now ready for a final vote by the full Florida House of Representatives. Stay with us, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast. Plus, a Florida A&M University hazing case back in the spotlight. The loophole that could change the fate of a convicted former student. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Our overall experience working with California Closets was phenomenal. Calm, reassuring. Through happenstance, we ended up paired with our designer, Jen. She was someone who not only was patient, someone who was professional. She's become extended family. She had great insight to help direct me towards those things that could make our dreams come true. We are the Greens, and this is our California Closet story. SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers, so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high-performance parts and advice. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. We all love our kids and want what's best for them. You have the power to help your kids learn to succeed in life every day. When you promote a love for learning at home, children build the skills they need to be ready for school. You can be their everyday hero. It's easy. Just text Everyday Hero to 77453 for simple learning tips. Download the all new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. Well, Bob, another beautiful day here on the Sun Coast, but a case of deadly hazing of a Florida A&M University band member is back in the spotlight. The lawyer for Dante Martin convicted in the death of 26 year old Robert Champion says state law on hazing is vague and should not be applied in the case. That lawyer citing hazing law that makes an exception for customary athletic events or other similar contests or competitions. Champion was a marching drum major who died after bandmates beat him in a hazing ritual. Supreme Court justices hearing the case seemed skeptical that the exception would apply. And the University of Central Florida has suspended the Beta Theta Pi fraternity after a woman claims her son was forced to chug a bottle of vodka during a pledging event. The suspension came after a former pledge's mother wrote the fraternity's national organization saying her son was dropped as a pledge after getting sick because he was forced to drink a bottle of Smirnoff ice. Beta Theta Pi was banned from Penn State University after a pledge died at a fraternity party there last year. The national organization now says it's working with the University of Central Florida to investigate this latest case. And now we will check yes. in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Jacqueline, thanks. Uh, we saw a beautiful afternoon anyway. Some clouds around this morning, but still a very warm day too. And 82 degrees for a high today. It was near a record of wow. 84 so back in 1989. And beautiful photos sent in again to pics at mysuncoast.com. This of the calm bay out there. Robert getting this one from the Ringling. As the sun was setting, a beautiful shot it was. And 
This one here too, and not too shabby. Fred Seeger and Casey Key. We have some little birds down there fetching probably some you know snails or whatever it may be. Um, it looks like uh, the sun was perfect sunset. You saw a lot of high cirrus clouds around, even some vapor trails left over from some jet traffic known as cirrus contrails. Uh, Casey Key webcam also showing that gorgeous weather out there on the bay. Big story, weather headlines, fog developing, staying warm, however, and a slight chance for a few weekend showers. Not a lot, but 30% uh, chance. Uh, Sunday, again, late in the afternoon and evening and into Monday morning as a system kind of weakens right over the top of us. Well, as far as we're concerned, uh, we're looking at this frontal boundary, which continues to move very slowly to the south, and that's a result of a large area of high pressure off the coast of Florida right now. It's kind of running into that. The main energy associated with this front is leaving, heading to the northeast. So there's not much push behind it. It's going to get close to us, and there's a chance, a very isolated chance for a few passing showers. But you'll notice how that rain was rather intense earlier today, and now just a few weak showers out there over North Florida. Here's one forecast model. Uh, it looks as though we'll, we will see some fog rolling in. That fog can be rather thick at times uh, along the coast. It's not going to be everywhere, but it's going to be a sea fog, and that tends to... Um, Take a little while to burn off and when the sun comes up, it takes a little longer for it to get out of here and we'll see uh, generally low clouds around throughout much of the morning, I think, and into the early afternoon. Some breaks now and again, a little bit better as far as beach weather goes on Saturday. Friday, we could still see some lingering clouds as a result of that front. Now it's 66, it's warm and the dew point temperature very close, one degree away from that uh, dew point temperature of being the same as the actual ambient air temperature, and that means fog is a real possibility. Today's high was 82. There it was two degrees shy of the record 84, set in 89, 50s, 60s, and 70s across the state. 74 in Key West, nice warm 75 in Miami, and 73 into Orlando. Temperatures now into the upper 60s right near the coast. The water temperature pretty warm for this time of year. 66 degrees made it quite a rebound after that cold spell a few weeks ago. 72 in Arcadia and in Sebring. Tomorrow's high temperatures will be warm, upper 70s despite the clouds. Now, this particular forecast model is suggesting some showers around. I don't think we're going to see any lightning, but there may be one or two lone showers in the afternoon and evening uh, with this frontal boundary kind of left over. Not everyone's going to get the rain either. I would not be surprised to see one or two lone showers in the mix due to the daytime heating really in the old frontal boundary. Well, a quick hitting snowstorm has made its way through the northern New England states right now. Boston had his fair share of snow. I know a lot of people are down uh, visiting and staying uh, near Venice for the uh, Plantation Community Foundation Celebrity Golf Classic, which goes on uh, tomorrow. And it should be good weather for that, although a bit cloudy, but should not be a big factor. And we will see that rain staying to our north, uh, mainly throughout the weekend. Late Sunday, a slight chance for a shower here and there. Good weather for boating tomorrow. Light chop out there. Seas running two feet or less and a light chop uh, on the bays and inland waters. Here's the seven day forecast then. 77, a little cooler with some clouds around, slight chance for a shower at 20%. And then temperatures rebounding quite nicely in the low 80s on Friday and Saturday. Maybe a little bit more sunshine on Saturday too. And then look for increasing clouds, a chance for showers late in the day on Sunday, Sunday night and Monday, but temperatures remaining into the mid to upper 70s. Jacqueline? Okay, sounds nice. Thank you so much, Bob. The Florida House and Senate are set to approve rival versions of a new $87 billion state budget. Legislators spent most of today asking questions and making minor changes to that spending plan that will cover all state spending from July of 2018 to June of 2019. The House and Senate are expected to take a final vote tomorrow. While the two chambers are spending roughly the same, they are not spending the same amount in the key areas, including environmental programs, public schools, and state universities. The annual session is scheduled to end on March 9th. And today, the Senate agreed to a rare bipartisan spending bill, but it does not include a deal on immigration, something that both President Trump and Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi want. ABC's Tara Palmieri gives us a look at what the bill does include. Senate leaders on both sides of the aisle are claiming victory. They agreed to a two-year spending bill that, if approved by the House, would avoid a government shutdown. This budget deal is the first real sprout of bipartisanship. I hope we can build on this bipartisan momentum. The deal includes billions for opioid treatment, disaster relief and infrastructure, and a big boost to defense spending. But the bill puts off immigration for another day, and that's not cutting it for House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. She gave a speech on the House floor for eight hours in support of Dreamers. 
Undocumented immigrants brought to the country as children. This package does not have my support, nor does it have the support of a large number of members of our caucus. On Tuesday, President Trump provoked a shutdown over his immigration demands. He wants a wall along the southern border in exchange for amnesty for the Dreamers. White House spokesperson Sarah Sanders said he welcomes the Senate deal, even if it doesn't include an immigration fix. I think we've made clear that uh, the budget deal should uh, be a budget deal and that members of Congress, like Nancy Pelosi, should not hold our military hostage over uh, a separate issue. The Senate bill has been sent over to the House. They have less than 24 hours to secure votes on a bill that not only excludes immigration, but also raises the deficit, something House conservatives will most likely reject. I can't imagine there's a whole lot of us wanting to vote for this. Now the DACA program that protects streamers expires on March 5th, but the president's chief of staff said they have no plans to extend that deadline, putting pressure on Congress to act. Tara Palmieri, ABC News, Washington. Sports is next, but first here's what's coming up on Jimmy Kimmel. We made a show tonight if you like that sort of thing. Didn't you say that your dad like li lives on a garlic farm or something like yes, that? Yes. Yeah. Does your husband smell like garlic all the time? Well, I, I do as well. So. You do as well. <laughs> I just had a very educational ride with Nina. Did you learn anything? Where do I begin? So all this stuff goes into a safety check. Yep. It's a long list. It's important stuff. Test the smoke detector. Yep. Check the breaker box. Yep. Meter the GFCIs. Ground fault circuit interrupters. Why do that? <laughs> Call 888-8-SPARKY. Nina, you make it look easy. Thanks, but don't do it yourself. Who's your guy? My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling, and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.com. EmployFlorida.com. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed, isn't it? Why it is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops. Coming! But I needed help. Help with my insurance. And that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision. And they'll help you to keep moving forward. Just like me. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the nation first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a multimedia local sales manager. Strong new business, digital, and OTT background required. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. Now, sports. 
Today was a big day for high school seniors and college football programs across across the country. And of course, National Signing Day always brings some surprises as players announce their college choices. In Pensacola, Escambia High School wide receiver Jacob Copeland's mother did not seem all that thrilled with his college decision, though. Copeland was surrounded by several people, most of whom were either wearing Alabama or Tennessee gear. Seated to his right was his mother wearing an Alabama sweatshirt and a Tennessee knit hat. But as soon as Copeland grabbed a Florida hat, as you can see right there, and announced that he would play for the Gators. You can see his mother leaving the table, seemingly disgusted with his choice in the Florida Gators. She later returned and gave her son an emotional long hug of support. So congratulations to him. The Tampa Bay Rays will celebrate the team's 20th anniversary this season. Team officials hosting a kickoff event today at Tropicana Field. New for 2018, the Rays have created a 20th anniversary logo that will appear as a patch on the left sleeve of all Rays regular season jerseys and caps. The home plate shaped patch features the number 20, a sunburst and a variation of the original fish, all in the Rays modern colors. The team will also celebrate the team's first ever game and its 2008 appearance in the World Series during this anniversary season. That's a look at sports. We'll have tonight's winning lotto numbers when we come back. My California Closets designer is a rock star. She was able to design the most beautiful space for me. When I turn the lights on, it's breathtaking. La! It's just a little slice of organized heaven. The California Closet team was so professional, so reliable. It was seriously a dream come true. My name is Jill, and this is my California Closet story. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G-Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Everyone likes the 2018 Honda Civic. For $169 a month, you made Civic a best-selling compact car in America. You'll like Civic's five-star safety ratings and the KBB.com name Civic a best buy and the most awarded car. Get the 2018 Civic at a payment you love. $169 a month today at your local Honda dealer. Honda, I like it. Oh, yeah, I like it. Planning a Carnival Fantasy Cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Uh, Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios.
The world's first space sports car is cruising toward the asteroid belt well beyond Mars. Today, SpaceX chief Elon Musk confirming the new, more distant route for his rocketing Tesla Roadster, which was launched aboard the company's Falcon Heavy from Florida yesterday. Musk says the final firing of the upper stage put his red convertible into a solar orbit that stretches all the way to the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The original plan had the car traveling no further than Mars. In the driver's seat of the Tesla is a space-suited mannequin named, nicknamed rather Starman. Musk does not plan to fly people on the heavy, but it is working on an even bigger rocket for deep space crews. So stand by. Just amazing what yeah, we saw it is, yesterday. It is, it is pretty wild to see that car up there in space like that with the nice cameras too. I know. The HD out there almost looks check. unreal. Yeah, you, you wonder if we're going to see anything uh, kind of looking around. You never know. Right. Nice car like that. Aliens might pick it up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> pretty nice, nice car. Uh, nice weather for us in the fog in the morning, but nice weather in the afternoon and evening. Temperatures will top out in the upper 70s even tomorrow with the, the fog and clouds around. So still pretty warm. Okay, thank you so much, Bob, and thank you all for joining us this evening. Have a great rest of your night.